Hey guys. Hello. Give it another three or four minutes before we get started. Good morning. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. Uh, happy 2020. <clears throat> So just as a reminder, if you ever sign any uh, documents this year and you're in the habit of putting the last two digits of the year, make sure to write out the full year because it turns out that if you just write 20, it makes it easy for someone to stick 19 or 18 or something else of their choice behind it. Uh, so make it... What? <laughs> Yeah, because it starts the year starts with twenty. So if you just write twenty to abbreviate it, then you can write like this thing was due to me in twenty nineteen rather than twenty twenty. Oh, okay. Oh. So <laughs> I guess the real answer is don't uh, don't sign documents that. Um, uh, with untrustworthy people. But if you can't do that, then make sure you write out the full date. While we're waiting, can we get someone to share the uh, the agenda? Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 Cool, thank you. And Please uh, add yourself to the uh, to the list if you haven't done so already. Thank you, Lucina. Lucina posted the uh, link in the chat. Okay, let's get started. So welcome to the next Network Service Mesh meeting. Uh, we have this particular meeting every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific. And we 
also participate in the CNCF Telecom User Group, which occurs every first Monday at uh, 8 a.m. Pacific and every third Monday at 3 a.m. Pacific. Uh, good for Asian time. We also uh, are participating in the CNCF Networking Working Group, which has uh, recently been rebooted. Uh, it meets every two weeks on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Uh, the last meeting was on December 19th. Um, I need to ask uh, Lee Calcote when the, the next one for this year is going to start so we can get the cadence up on that again. And with that, we have a couple major events. So the first question is, do we want to keep FOSDEM 2020 on the list? Is, is, are, we doing anything, uh, are we doing anything there? I don't think so. Okay. Um, highly encourage you to go to the FOSDEM still, even though we don't have a, a presence there. I, it's, a, it's a very fun event. We have, we have KubeCon coming up. And uh, with KubeCon, the call for proposals is already closed. Um, the notifications uh, should go out uh, within a couple of weeks. Um, his, so we are we we have several call uh topics that have been uh, that have been shared into um into the proposals and uh taylor has a has comprised a list of people who have self selected themselves into uh into the list and we also need to prepare the maintainers truck uh <clears throat> yeah this is uh this is true and so um I don't. I don't recall if we. I don't think we have a prospectus up for that yet. Um, Ed, do you have any information on that by any chance? No, oh, sorry. On 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 NSMCon? No, it's on the list of things that that need to happen this week. Is I, I you know effectively getting a prospectus together, getting a CFP out, etc. Um, so definitely need to get that moving because <clears throat> time is running a little bit short. But the good news is we've done this once before, so it should be quite doable. Yeah, and so we um, we have a larger room now, or at least that's what I've been told. So we do. Uh, that should help with uh, not running out of seats and uh, not running out of food. Well, we, and assuming that we get. Uh, um, a food sponsorship. We have Open Networking and Edge Summit in North America as well, which is going to be in Los Angeles. The call for proposals closes on February 3rd. So make sure you get your proposals in if you intend to be in Los Angeles during these dates. Um, we did this announcement last time, but we'll do it again one more time. Uh, we donated the 23 hundred dollars we got from the registration fees of the last NSM con to the CNCF diversity scholarship. Um, I believe the intention is to do that again in the next NSM con. Uh, we will have that enumerated in the prospectus as to what exactly we will do with that. Uh, but please, uh, if there's any talk that you're interested in or you want to share with others, we have the NSM con playlist and a YouTube channel that has the, uh, the the set of talks. So these are specifically for NSMCon. The KubeCon NSM talks are on the CNCF channel. So you'll have to go rummage through the CNCF uh, channel there for, for those ones. The And with that, we have the social media community team. Lucinda, you have the floor. Hi, happy new year, everybody. Happy new year. Great. So. I've had some help with um, keeping things moving over the past three weeks or so. And in the past three weeks, we've gained 21 new Twitter followers and 19 new LinkedIn followers and have posted about 32 tweets and retweets, including the NSMCon EU 2020 announcement, the um, two calls today, and there was an article, Kubernetes Continues to Shine, that featured NSM. 
And we also posted videos of each individual NSM talk. So that's going to be both on our Twitter and LinkedIn. And just this morning posted a recap of the 0.2.0 release. So the plan, once we have the link for the CFP for NSMCon, we'll go ahead and share that. If we are um, needing sponsors to sign up, we can go ahead and share that and let them know that it's open and share the link on how sponsors can get involved and any retweets that mention us in the press. And oh, good. The Contributor Podcast. Is the URL available for that one? I haven't mm. seen a URL yet. Uh, we got a, uh, a an example of it just so that we can review it and make sure that uh, uh, our respective PRs are uh, are happy with it. So once we've gone through that cycle, we will we will have it up and uh, or they will have it up and we will share it aggressively. Sounds perfect. Is there anything else you'd like to see in this next week? I think we may all just be slowly fading in from the break. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I say share it aggressive, when I say share it aggressively, I, I mean friendly, friendly, share, share it friendly. <laughs> <laughs> you could be friendly and aggressive at the same time. It works. <laughs> it's confusing, but it works. Cool. So, is there anything else that you uh, that you have, Lucina, or is that? Uh... Is that it? Very good. I think that's it for the moment. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Cool. So on the agenda, so the we have some uh, thing to discuss regarding crowd test. Um, Ed, you have the floor. Yeah. Um, so basically, um, I know we discussed it several times the desire to sort of break things out of the main network service mesh repo because it's, it's not that it's strictly objectively large, but it's definitely thematically large. There are a bunch of things living in that repo from a thematic point of view, even though the number of lines of code is still relatively small. Um, and so um, one of those things is this tool cloud test, which is basically a completely kick-ass tool for um, you know, for basically running tests across multiple public clouds and other things. And we use it for all our integration testing. <clears throat> and it's relatively self-contained. And so there was a desire to um, pull cloud test out into a separate repo. Um, and so we have folks who are interested in actually going and doing that work, but we wanted to make sure that we sort of double clicked with the community and see how people felt about it before, you know, new repos started appearing and things started flying around. I think uh, my preference would be for it to be a to be a new repo, um, something that we can then pull in. So, uh, I'm, yeah, with the conversations that uh, that we've um, that we've had on cloud tests, is there's no dependency on anything else, so it should be something trivial to to pull out. And uh, I certain I, I have interest uh, to run it in other contexts uh, outside of NSM as as well uh so uh having it in a separate repo would uh, would be very helpful um uh, yeah i i've been one of the proponents of this idea for some time so i don't think that i need to say <laughs> yeah i mean i in all honesty I, I i expected people to be very positive towards this idea but just having a repo suddenly appear and stuff move around without talking about it seemed mm -hmm. like the wrong thing as well. So I wanted to make sure we brought this up as a matter of conversation. Mm -hmm. um, we probably want to, you know, time permitting, sort of have a, a general conversation about where we might want to go in terms of generally breaking things into separate repos um, <clears throat> and in sort of the timing of it. The cloud test seemed like a very obvious choice because it was low impact mm -hmm. and we could see how that goes. Um, but there's also a question of, of how we end up doing CI when we have multiple repos as well that we want to think about. Yeah, I guess that, that just a simple go get will just bring us the 
where is the yeah the The, the binary and then then you just use it i guess that's that that would be it but okay i mean you, you could even package cloud test in a container which is probably a good idea ah right. okay <laughs> <coughs> yeah yeah i mean so like e either way i could absolutely see um mm -hmm. so. so speaking of this one other thing that actually bugs me is uh this case conf thing that is supposed to disappear i believe over time but it's still kind of hanging around here are we still using it uh hmm. i think that some bits are used here for example the cluster setup i think it's um, uh, it's done through to these files here yeah I, I, we wouldn't mind that, that bit of house cleaning coming together um, no, no, it's 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 a separate topic. It's not related to cloud test directly. Just like something that that appears yeah. from time to time, and then yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, it's the new year. We're all sort of in the, the mode of, of house cleaning. <laughs> I think. Yeah, you know, everyone is rested and and slightly overfed. Um, <laughs> and... uh, slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe a little more than slightly. Yeah. Oh. So. Um, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so um, anything else, uh, Ed, that you I don't think that we have anything in the agenda here? Those, those were some of the things that came to mind. I mean, we, we had talked last year about the path stuff. I'm, I'm sort of busily poking at the refactor work for that. I'm, I was hopeful to have it done over the break, but um, my break ended up being a little bit more like a break, which is probably healthy overall. Um, and so I probably still have about another week on, on getting some of that code done, but that will be <clears throat> um, exciting as it comes together. Um, so so uh, today in the morning, uh, we had this, uh, uh, the Asia time zone friendly call uh, and uh, Andre brought up the topics so or we spoke a little bit about you know possible solutions of how we want to attack this uh, mm -hmm. um, I, I wouldn't call it a problem but this this challenge let's say mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, essentially how do you make a be able to connect to both B and C uh, without really understanding that there's B and C. It just says, I want to connect to each and every one of these existing. At least that's my interpretation of the, of the program. I think that it uh, it depends on the way you, you word yeah, it. I mean, that, that... It can kind of suggest the solution. So I'm obviously suggesting a solution here, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. uh, yeah, so so, like, there, uh, there's, there's one set of problems, which is the how might I do a full mesh? And then there's a yeah. more sophisticated problem, which is I would like to do a partial mesh, but via a complicated set of things that, that are mm -hmm. not going to be expressible um, in the, the sort of match policy stuff. So uh, Andre mentioned today that they had some ideas mm -hmm. that they wanted to share with a wider. Um, oh, fantastic. So yeah, the idea is just pretty simple, actually. At the moment, at the, at the current uh, state of NSM, we have a point to point connections. And the network service endpoint provide the mm -hmm. uh, pair of IP addresses uh, to connect between one point and and the NSC itself. So the idea is to think about for NSC to provide uh, not a point-to-point -point connection but the network. So we will have a dedicated uh, network service endpoint. It will provide the network. It will uh, assign the IP address. To the different clients, and uh, NS managers will do uh, the required virtual network with any of the different uh, approaches. Uh, so, yeah, like, I mean, set, up, set up a virtual network. Yeah. Yeah. Effectively, you have an NSC that provides whatever the network you need as a network services, and then things yeah, connect yeah, to it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and and so network service mesh is still just doing the V wires, but somebody is writing an NSC that gives you the L three network that you're interested in. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, exactly. No, I, I think that's actually 
<clears throat> I think that's actually definitely the thing. Um, I, I, I think though, part of, of, of it is you still have whatever network service endpoint that is providing that. You may have different of them in different places that need to connect to each other with vWires as well. Yeah, of course, it's just an idea. It needs to be worked right. It's oh yeah, no, so and, and the, the lovely thing is that idea can be explored in all kinds of different ways. I mean, one of the nice things about network service mesh is that there is no one true way to solve that problem, which means, yep. you know, if somebody thinks of a smarter way to approach it, um, they can just write the network service endpoints and away they go. So I don't know if Jay is on the call. Uh, no, he's not. But uh, he also suggested some solution that they're working on. Uh, he will probably try to present it on the next work group call. Fantastic. Uh, some, uh, so they have some ideas, something that they're working on, and maybe, I don't know, this can help eventually. I don't know. Uh, ideas but, are exciting. Uh, mm -hmm, yes. Um, So, uh, Andre, do you have any kind of diagram that you want to share, or like, no, 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 no. It just like I just it. yesterday read about this problem and mm -hmm. just we discussed internally mm -hmm. and uh, discussed on Asia time meeting and that's all mostly. So it so, looks interesting. Yeah, I, mean, so, I would I would suggest also. Um, you might want to reach out. I know Ilya is in contact with him. You may want to reach out to Tim because I know he's also thinking in this area. So, um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I, how to put it, I'm, I'm perfectly delighted to have people explore multiple ideas, um, but it is better if people who are going to explore the same idea discover they're exploring the same idea and collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, my only, as, as we just spoke in the morning, like, okay, my morning, uh, in the earlier call, let's say, um, my only concern, okay, it's not a concern, but a kind of thing that, that I would like to make sure uh, that we keep the API as generic as possible and not uh, in kind of, uh, in the in an attempt to solve a particular use case to, to, to make just kind of, uh, you know, solutions that are meant to solve the particular use case. I'm, I'm a million percent with you on that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm completely, completely, completely in concurrence. Um, you know, I, I, I basically, <clears throat> I have two principles that actually, in my, the way I think about code, that that actually, that support that. The first is, you should keep your APIs simple and few, and gen in general. And then the second one is <clears throat> that you should avoid unnatural acts. I know we've all been in that place where you're sort of hacking on a piece of code, trying to get it work and hacking on a piece of code, trying to get it work to work. And you go to bed and you get up in the morning, and you look at the code and you're like, what was I thinking? Because you've done something horrible and unnatural. Let's, let's try and avoid an unnatural acts. So. Never happened to me. <laughs> yeah, never, never, ever. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's sort of like the, the running joke. Um, I, I've often joked, hell is other people's code. Please note, you were other people yesterday. <laughs> uh, yeah okay so uh maybe maybe while we are here on this picture and um, also in relation with something that andre mentioned uh i had a, a discussion today with um uh, with one person uh i think that that you uh that you probably can rem you will remember this pr where we, we were trying to uh, have multiple Quagga routers uh, interconnected in a mesh, if you remember this problem in the examples. Okay, whatever. Uh, oh, I mean, sorry, I was muted. I, I don't remember that specifically, but I, it's exactly the kind of logical thing that a human being would want to do with a system, definitely. Yeah, so uh, we were discussing and this uh, topic of um, IP assignments, static assignments, et cetera, et cetera, came up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that, that currently we are more or less bound to having IP over the connection. We're kind of requesting it each and every time, which should be probably changed. I haven't checked the code lately, but I think that it was, it was a thing at we, some we, point. We are, we are a little bit, we are not quite as crisp in my recollection about mm -hmm. being flexible with payload. 
as the API would tend to indicate. And I think that's just yeah. a matter of we've been a little overly focused on L3. Yeah, 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 yeah. of course, of course. That's, so we, that's came, we came to it honestly, but we, we know we want to do better. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I think that, that at some point we'll have to think a little bit more about how do we want the IPs being, because what we have today is an IPAM implementation in the SDK, because that's, that's, that's where it lives today. Uh, mm -hmm. is, is something it does its job for whatever we, we, we wanted to to use it but uh, uh, probably people would like to be able to to assign IP addresses uh, in in other ways let's say yeah I, I mean you could totally do all kinds of different IPAM implementations that are different than the one that we did in the SDK um, I think the SDK one was done as sort of the simplest available and I've even got some interesting thoughts. I, I've thought a little bit about this problem space as well, uh, particularly around doing the L3 domains. Yeah. <clears throat> and it, it turns out like we have all kinds of interesting characteristics that make IPAM for us in the L3 radically simpler than it is generally thought to be as a problem. It turns out that the things that normally make IPAM hard for us make IPAM easier. And so there's, there, there's some really interesting approaches to IPAM that can be taken. I think that would be very powerful. You know, okay. and, and I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to explore those as long as we don't like weld any one particular way. Okay. Uh, anything else that folks would like to discuss here? Or we just drop it up and... Yeah, I, I think we're all sort of fading back in. Uh, if anybody has other things they'd like to talk about, that would be awesome. We have one of these rare meetings where we're not running up against the wire. So if you've got something you've been saving, feel free to bring it up. Or any questions as well. Okay, well, if there is no... Uh, for the questions, uh, it's last chance to unmute yourself by if you didn't unmute yourself by accident. Uh, if there are no further questions or comments for the agenda, then uh, we will have this same meeting again, same time next week. And I want to thank everyone for attending our first one of the year. And here's to a fantastic year for uh, for the community that's coming up. So we'll catch you all later. See you. Take care. Bye. Have a good day. Have a good day. Happy year. Bye, bye. 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 Cheers.